Good morning, everybody, and welcome yet another time to this eMarket Hero Academy webinar. I am thrilled to have you all here, and I am equally thrilled to welcome Funda from Online Advisor to this webinar. Thank you so much for being here, Funda. And thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. I will give you a chance to introduce yourself and a little bit more about Online Advisor uh, okay. in just a moment so everybody can get to know you and why you are the Google Ads black belts that we're going to uh, <laughs> learn from today. <laughs> um, so obviously today the topic of this webinar is get to know Google Ads and get some Google Ads tips and tricks and advice from Funda who's been working intensively with Google Ads in uh, both previous positions and in uh, at Online Advisor, of course. So, uh, so there's definitely some some good takeaways to uh, to learn from. So you'll get we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, my name is Klaus. I am uh, the uh, product evangelist and head of partner alliances here at eMarketeer, and uh, we are partners with Online Advisor, selling partner and consulting partner in Denmark. So we we go way way back. And I'm sure we have a lot of shared customers and, and colleagues on the on the call today as well. Um, the practicalities, uh, let's get those out of the way first. We're going to be 45 to 60 minutes on the webinar today, uh, depending on how many questions you guys shoot at us. Uh, so please go ahead and do that. We are so many people today, so we will all be muted. But you can go ahead and type your questions into the questions box in the right or left hand side of your screen. Please go ahead and do that, and we will uh, we will pick up on those questions at the Q and A session at the end that I will moderate. So let us know what you think, what your worries and questions and observations are with regards to Google Ads, and we will do our best to answer those within the uh, the Q and A session there at the end of the hour. We'll record the uh, presentation, and you will get the slides afterwards as well. So only do mental notes and write us questions. You don't have to screen grab and do too many notes on your own there. Uh, so the webinar objectives, of course, is to understand the basics of how Google Ads work and get some tips on bidding strategies and audience building. And um, Funda will get more into the, de the details of the agenda, but that's the overall objective here. So you may be new to Google Ads and you will learn a lot of new stuff today. And if you're experienced, I guess it's fair to say that there are definitely some things that you can take away as well and, and improve on. Um, just a few words on eMarketeer for those of you who are here for the first time. We are a marketing automation platform. We are a Swedish company based just outside Stockholm. We've been in the cloud since 2002, serving more than 1,500 clients using our marketing automation platform. And what that basically means, it's a platform where you can do a lot of your online marketing uh, projects from lead generation to mail campaigns, newsletters, event management, mobile apps, landing pages, surveys, web forms, automate everything. So Really just a place, a toolbox for you to organize all of your marketing, uh, uh, online marketing projects, uh, design them, execute them, and track their performance. So that is all I wanted to say about us. And without further ado, I want you, Funda, to take it away and lead us into the rabbit hole of uh, Google Ads and your experience with that. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to switch over and make you the presenter here so you can go ahead and share your screen. So make presenter, you should see a small box appearing that allows you to present. Yes, and I'll just show my screen. And I think everybody can see my screen now. We, yeah, we can see PowerPoint, yeah. There you go, yes. absolutely. Well, this is my PowerPoint to you guys. Uh, it's how to like to get to know Google Ads by me. First of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about what company that I'm coming from. We are based in Copenhagen, and what we do, we help our customers with their digital customer journey by helping them to be found, to be seen, and to be remembered. And we do that by doing some CEO, some ads, doing some website designing, and yeah, and then also email marketing and remarketing. We have some customers such as Universal Music, Ekman, and CGI as well. And we have some experience with B2B, B2C and local and international markets, such as the Nordic markets, with which we've been working a lot of lot with lately. And last but not least, we are e-marketeer and Google partners as well. So yeah, check out our website. It's we just got recently a new brand. So it's really cool, by the way. So check it out. Um about me. Well, I'm an ads manager at Online Advisor, and I work primarily with the Google Ads here at the office. My experience go way before like 2018, where I've been working with like working from Accenture and Cognizant in Dublin. 
and we had some big clients over there where I was optimizing their accounts within the Turkish market and the Danish market. My passion is to make a difference. So a simple thank you can actually make my day. Yeah, <laughs> and fun fact about me, we're gonna talk about Google Ads today. But lately I've been searching about how to do webinars because this is my very first webinar. So bear with me. <laughs> um, yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. So yeah, I'm gonna move to the next slide. What is Google Ads? Well, you see, for example, some shops with a lot of brands and logos everywhere, a physical shop. What Google Ads does is that it's kind of the same. It's just taking the whole perspective out to the online platform where you will be seen and be found and where you can show showcase all your products as well. So that's what I would say that Google Ads primarily is. But first of all, I'd like to know how many of you actually know Google Ads. So Klaus, can you help me with the pools? Absolutely. We are going, you're going to learn a lot from Funda today, and we want to learn just a little bit about you as well and mm -hmm. uh, get some context, I guess you can say, about um, uh, where you are with regards to Google Ads. So we're going to launch a quick poll here that you should be seeing on your screen. And it asks you, how well do you know Google Ads? And uh, you've got some options there. I don't know much about Google Ads. Uh, my knowledge is limited, but I feel confident. Um, maybe my knowledge is limited, but I do feel I don't feel confident. And you have a great understanding of Google Ads. So please go ahead and let us know what you think your own kind of competency or, or confidence level is with regards to Google Ads, and that will make it easier for Funda to kind of relate back when she goes into to more details here. Exactly. I can see a lot of people are voting here, Funda, so you'll have some background on the crowd in just a second. Uh, okay, we're around 70% have voted, so I'm going to close the poll and show the yeah. results. Uh, yeah, so now everybody should be seeing the results. Um, feel free to comment on that if you see anything particular there, Funda. Yes, well, I see that there's actually 33% who does not have much knowledge within Google Ads, but don't worry. We'll take it all in basic. We'll, I'll tell you more about it. And then there's also a few that actually have a knowledge within Google Ads and they feel confident about it. So that's great, guys. If you have some tips for me, I'll happily take them as well. Um, there is another question, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just one comment here. I think it's it's yeah. this is really bullseye. Um, a lot of people use Google Ads and you know know how, but still you don't really feel confident about what you're doing. You're sure that there's more to do, or you could be doing it smarter. I think that's a very generic and general feeling for many marketeers there. So uh, hopefully after today you'll feel a, a bit more a bit more confident for sure. Uh, we're gonna launch one more uh, about do you use Google Ads? Yes or no? So that's a real easy one, I guess. <laughs> and I can see people are voting very quickly here as well. So we will have an answer there because there may be colleagues to people who are actually managing the Google ads and they don't do it themselves yeah. here. Or maybe they have an agency managing that, but they want to get on a better eye to eye level with their agency. But okay, that I'm is gonna... the fun part, actually. Like when you, you, you might be using Google ads, but it's maybe just running and you don't really know what's happening in it. Right. So that's actually a really interesting question. For me to ask you guys so here oh we're almost at a 50 50 split yes <laughs> exciting <laughs> well yeah like of course if you don't use google ads i'll tell you the basics as well how it works so if you're ever going to use it you'll know what to do and then for those who said yes that is really nice to see that i'm not the only one doing google ads around here <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. Well, thank you guys for uh, for um, for uh, humoring us with uh, with your answers there for the quick poll. Really useful for us. And I will hide the results and you should be back on your screen. Just flip back into your PowerPoints there, Funda, and we will be ready to rock. There you go. Excellent. Yeah. Take it away. Well, we're going to start again. So what you'll learn today is that how does Google Ads actually work? And then we're going to go through like how to get started, like what's what we should consider and how to reach your audience as well this is a really important part i'll say because that's the more most technical part and also which is my favorite to be honest um yes so how does google ads work yeah this is the google ads account you've probably seen it a few places um this is the structure 
and you can actually have a lot of campaigns within one account so you don't need to if you for example have different markets in different countries you don't need to separate those accounts by countries but you can just use a campaign and then differentiate that by the country you can have different ad groups within one campaign as well and that could also be something like which kind of market you would target or if you have more specifications about that and within each ad group you can add some keywords you can add some ads and extensions so these are really good to actually separate your whole campaign into smaller parts to get it more structured so you know what's best for your company and you can actually reflect that on the ads account structure yes and the platforms uh, a lot of people know about the google ads platform and probably also about the analytics i've been working closely with the ads platform and the last one the editor for the past two years analytics has been something that i'm using more now um, what is the, what I want to say about this slide is that when you use Google Ads, make sure that you're actually using tools that is efficient for you. When I'm looking at the ads platform, for example, and I'm using the one that's on the top, I can see how the account is structured and I can see what, which kind of conversions there is, which kind of impression there is. And it's really good to actually get reports out of. Analytics does the same, but analytics also use the organic traffic as well least uh, the one google ads adwords editor that is my favorite because i can actually post multiple changes in one it's like a bulk function i can do everything and then put it inside a google sheet or a, or excel document actually and then i can just put it in there without typing each thing in in google ads for example yes and now i'll move forward to the goals well a lot of people see this when they open their first campaign and they probably think this might not be relevant for me or they think why should i add a goal now but this is actually really important for you to navigate within the big google world because if you for example want to do some brand awareness and reach for your campaigns the options that will allow you to do a campaign type is for example display and video search will not come up and i'll get more into the different kinds of different types of uh, campaigns but this, these goals are actually really good to simplify the options that you have within Google Ads and the campaign types. So make sure that you're using them because when I see some of the clients not having them, I'm actually talking with them and asking them why they haven't set a goal yet. And this will also make it simpler for you. Search campaigns, we all see them. They are sometimes annoying. Sometimes we get a relevant ad out of it. Sometimes we don't. But as you can see here, these are actually search campaigns are actually, or search ads, sorry, are actually triggered by the keywords that you're typing in. So they'll look like this. They are the most commonly used search type, uh, campaign type. And it's also the one that has most competitors because it's so easy and simple to navigate within that. So like use it, but also use it wisely. Like which keywords are you triggering with and so on. We'll get more into that as well. Yep, the next slide is about display ads. We all know how annoying it can be when we are typing for shoes, for example, and it pops up on the next tab that you're in. But these are actually really good to help your client see you again. When they want to buy something, if they see you often enough, they will definitely get back to your website and they will definitely also have you in mind when they're going to consider to buy something. The bounce rate for display ads is a little bit lower, or no higher actually, but they're also been viewed by many more people. So this is a really good uh, campaign as well, campaign type. If you wanna create some brand awareness, if you wanna show your product to people, but you don't really want to just do search types. So this is one thing that I've been working with a lot of lately actually. And then we have the shopping. We all love to see the different kinds, or I do actually, to see the different kinds of product when I type for a product and then I just see what's available, what's in store, like what does it cost. When I can compare this, I have an easier way to just pick something out. And then I know which, which company that I will go to and buy for. But the thing is with shopping is that it's so transparent that if you're 
products are not aligned with what you have on your website and the description line is not the same as your what you have in your uh, website google will simply not use it because it doesn't match up what you have in your website so what you do with shopping ads for example is that you have to be completely honest and true with what you're having on your website and then put them in your shopping ads so that is really important as well remember that <laughs> uh, videos this is something that it's really interesting to see because when we, for example, go into YouTube, which we quite often do, or I do at least, we have the, we always see these ads and you can always skip them, but there's actually different kinds of these ads. There's five, six different types. And the thing is you're only paying for these ads if people have seen 30 seconds of your ad, or if, you, if they see your entire ad, if they actually integrate in engage with your ad as well so what is really important with these is that if you have a really strong brand or you have a really strong message that you want to send out put them inside the first five seconds of your video and then you'll actually be able to put that message into the user's mind so that is a really good thing as well so how to get started? We all have favorites and least favorites. <laughs> and bidding is kind of an area for me where I like it and don't like it at the same time because it gets limited on so many things. But I'm gonna take you through it as well. So first of all, we have something, um, before I start on this slide, we have something called automated bidding strategies and then we have some manual bidding strategies. I've noticed that when I use manual bidding strategies, Google always recommend me to hire my bids and budget because they say that my campaigns are limited by budget. This is a funny way to actually, I, like I could increase my budget all the time, every day, but at one point I won't be having enough budget in my own marketing department. So I noticed that when I switched it to the automatic bidding strategies, it's actually not putting up the limits of the campaigns, but it's kind of like keeping it steady um, the only like the difference between this is that if you're using an automated bidding strategies google is actually using its ai and then they're generating like clicks not generating clicks for you but they're putting out a budget that's the limit and they won't go above it so you'll get your clicks your conversions your leads from there with the manual cpc you will have more work to do because you have to monitor that exact campaign or big strategy type all the time because there will be adjustments. There will be some keywords that may, might not be relevant for you after five days or some negative keywords that probably won't be used anymore. So like with these kinds of, when I know these kinds of things, I also know that I have to keep it like limited, but also don't go above the budget that I'm told not to use. So yeah. What we have here is the automatic bidding strategies. Um, I'll not, I'm not gonna go through all of them with you guys, but I'll take some of them. The target ROAS is where you actually put, uh, that is called return on ad spend, uh, which means that you say that you wanna have $10 per click that is generated. So it's actually, on a way that it's putting the limit and then you will be have, like it sets up how much you're allowed to spend as well the maximized conversions is where you also put a budget and then it comes up with all the conversions it can within that limit the enhanced cpc that is the one that's a little bit more interesting to be honest because it is health and manual bidding strategies but also health and automated bid strategy type so this is where you have more or less control over your auto, uh, automated bidding strategies. But then again, it's like also using the manual bid strategy types. If you have some more questions within this, let me know for sure. <laughs> yes, and then the bid strategy types for the clicks are maximized clicks. Again, it's just like something with conversions, except for it's not conversions, it's tracking, but it's the clicks. So you put a budget and then it's gonna get the traffic, the clicks in. The manual CPC is where you have more or less um, uh, control over your bid strategy type, which also means that you have more control over your, your bids, for example, for keywords, for audiences, for devices, and so on. 
I'll go more in deep with that later. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is one thing that I've noticed with companies as well, that whenever I'm using the manual CPC, Google almost always just suggests me to increase my budget. So be aware of what you have to increase and decrease within that uh, bidding strategy side, because it's really important if you're using it. Then we have some big strategy types for the impressions and CPM is cost per millions. Uh, that is when you, for example, are using display video, and uh, yeah, display campaign type. And that is where you are, where you're gonna be measuring every million per million of the people who've been seeing your ads. And this is mainly for the video, for the display, sorry, I keep saying video. Uh, this is mainly for the display ads. VCPM is the same as the one as CPM, but this is the one with the video. So that's where it is. Uh, as well, this is really good to see how many impressions you'll get from an ad shown. And also really good to keep on track, are your ads actually relevant for the client and so on. Yes. And then I'll go to how to reach your target audience. And this is something that I find really interesting because it's more technical part. And there will be like some, there's maybe some different opinions about it, but again, it's whatever suits your business best is what you should be using. Uh, for example, when you are using, like I've been seeing a lot of clients using customized audiences, but they are often measuring it down in such a little space that they don't really take everyone that might be interested for your product. And that is really important to have as well, like keep in mind, because if you are, targeting a woman above 30 years old um, that might be interested in a specific type of hair saloon or whatever, that might be also be a good idea to include the other targets which might be using those products as well. So like don't be too, um, what, do I, what should I call it? Like don't be too shy to use every audience, not use every audience, but not to broaden your audience more. Uh, what I usually do is that I use Google audiences because they are in the like they're already set up and easy to navigate in and easy to add as well. They are way more than they have more users within them. So I always make sure that whenever I see a campaign, I add those Google audiences that is necessary or actually would be beneficial for the different campaign types that I have. Um, one golden rule here is that if an audience list does not have more than 1,000 users, Google will not be using it. And I've seen a lot of uh, campaigns where the audience is, is less than 1,000. And it's a shame because they, I know that they for sure have been used in some time on like narrow, narrowing these audiences down. And that's why it's like, when we do these audiences, we should not just narrow it down, but we should think out of the box and include the people we didn't think of before. Um, with the custom audience, no, with the audience in Google, it's an easy way to find it. I recently found them as well on the editor part. That made me so happy to be honest, because it's just a click and then they're in there. So like, check it out, use it. If you have questions, let me know. Yes, and then we have some common keyword mistakes. This is the fun part. Um, when like when you're using a keyword, you probably just put in, and for those who doesn't know what this is, they probably just put in the keyword they think that might be relevant. But there's different kinds of keywords. So even though that you, for example, just put in women's shoes, you have to know which kind of type this keyword has to be. And so that is a really common mistake. You're not alone. A lot of people do that. So don't be ashamed if you have it. <laughs> and, and then some people are also like bidding against your own keywords. Like these keyword common mistakes are what I've found. There might be something else, but I don't know. And, but bidding against your own keywords, some accounts have uh, like where you have different capital, uh, where you have an upper, uh, case capital on your woman's shoes. And then you might be having another keyword saying with lower capital woman's shoes. We have to be aware of that these keywords are actually bidding against each other. 
And by doing that, our keywords might not perform that good as well. So make sure that you have that in mind when you're looking at it. And I'm a little bit of a structure person, so the people who knows me, <laughs> um, but having a clear match type structure will help you in the long run. You'll know that when you add another keyword, which keywords and match type it has to be in. So make sure that you have those. And then uh, one thing that's also a common mistake happening around the world um, is that when you are using a plus in front of a woman and not a plus behind the shoes, that key will would not be used by Google. So once we go through how the keyword actually works, make sure that yours are actually adjusted to this as well. Yes, the keywords and the match type. Well, we have the broad match. Whenever you actually upload a keyword into Google Ads or editor, you'll see that the keyword match type will be broad. That is something automatically Google does. But it also do the thing that it will be triggering other keywords that the person that's typing something in might not be relevant for that person. So be aware that, for example, if you're using woman's hat, you will be finding something with women's clothing, women's scarves, winter headwear for women. That might be good, but again, you have to know what your keywords are triggering. With the BMM, also called broad match modifier, we put a plus inside in front of every word. And that's make sure that it's narrowing it down. So it's only hats, hats and scarves as well, but hats for that is what's gonna be used and woman is also there. So it will take the synonyms of woman, it will take the synonym of the hats and be using that as well. With the phrase match, uh, what it does is like, it's kind of an exact keyword, but not like not the whole way. It's taking like, for example, woman's hat and it will be implementing any keyword that someone is typing in front of it or behind it. It will not come in between. And again, it will also be seeing like the synonyms for those words as well. The exact match is that when you have a woman's hats keyword, you will be triggered for woman's hat, also synonyms, but it will be narrowing it more down. It will be the exact keyword that will be used. So like when you have a brand, for example, what I would be suggesting you guys is that if you're doing ads for a brand that is really known, don't use the, like, I would not use the broad match. No, I would not use the exact match, sorry. Uh, where I would be using the generic keywords more in the exact match. So make sure that they are triggered and that they are actually being used. Some might have some different opinions on it, but it's also okay. <laughs> um, yes, we are gonna go through devices. Uh, devices is that, that's where you can actually, on Google Ads, you can see um, how many devices have been used to find your, to be, how, oh, sorry. How many ads that will be seeing on different devices. <clears throat> and this is really important because what we do in our life is that we adjust to everything. So why should we not also adjust our ads for the devices that's been used today? So if you can see that you're having more mobile phones coming in, like more mobile phones are actually looking at your ads, then I would recommend you to bid more on those devices. This is not something that everyone do, um, and it might not be relevant for your business as well, but try to see if there is a pattern and try to see if you can implement something in there to increase your quality of your ads for that as well. And then least, the hour of the day and the day of the week. This is a report that is really a small one, but it's also really an effective one. Because if you have a low budget and you don't want to spend all of your budget on a Saturday where someone is not look, even looking at your ads, then why would you be spending that money on that day? So by taking this report, you can actually see what time of the day and what day of the week you should be, you can, you're having more traffic. So like try to see if there's any pattern there as well and try to implement that in your ads as well, because this will save you money, first of all, and you will not be able to like spend money on things, on days that's not necessary for you. Yeah, and then some today's tips. Well, 
yeah, some people might know it, some people don't know it, but the uh, structure, it is really important. As I showed on the first slide with the ads accounts uh, uh, structure, if you know, like, of course, you know how your business works and you also know that how it is working best for you. So what I would recommend you to do is that having that structure from your business and putting that into your ads is not something that you should not do. Like putting that in a structure will make it more easier for you to navigate within all those things that you might be implementing later. Or for example, if you're going to expand to another market, having a Danish campaign, for example, and then having another campaign called the exact same, but just English would be beneficial. You'll have a clear structure of it. And whenever you're actually giving your account to someone else, or if someone else just has to have a look on it, or just coming with some tips, it will be easier for both parts to actually say why they've been choosing those things, for example. And then money should not be the limit for your ads to not be shown. I see a lot of people asking me, isn't it really expensive to be using Google Ads? It can be, and no as well. Like I've noticed lately that for example, display campaigns, we are paying so much money for our ads to be shown an, like around. And yes, we pay a lot of money for that, but you can also generate more conversions and more clicks or impressions by using Google Ads and you don't need to expend your whole budget for that. Like with a small budget, you can do a lot with Google Ads as well. So do that. Um, and the least, the one that's my favorite, combine your ads with CEO. I have a really good colleague here and we've noticed that whenever we work together with our ads and our CEO, our quality within the ads are increasing. We are putting the metadata and meta description and using that with ads as well. So use it like it's not something that is not known but it's really great to keep in mind that you have to work all your marketing like perspectives together to just create more quality and more relevancy for your audiences and clients so yes if you have any questions for me or would like to get in touch with my company as well go in write an email to me or find me on linkedin and um, yes I think that is it, Klaus. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Funda. Uh, <laughs> great, great uh, coverage of a lot of different topics. Make sure to keep your questions coming. We've had some questions coming during the webinar, and we will start with those in the Q&A session now. And um, um, people can still submit their comments and questions throughout. So I'm just going to nick back the screen here, showing my main screen. Sorry. And I'll show some of the questions that have popped up so far. So, but one thing go. that I just want to note out as well yeah, is sure. that remember, guys, this is my uh, my point of view of Google Ads and my experience with Google Ads. So you might have different opinions and different types of best practices, but yeah, this is what came from me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess. And, and also, if you if you out there, if you have a great tip, uh, what is your best Google Ads tip? You know, feel free to share that in the comments uh, or in the questions. And, and maybe we can share that in the Q&A sections as well, because it's a massive beast to Google Ads. Right. So there are many, you know, uh, areas that you can get into that uh, that we can't for sure cover today. Definitely. All and right. So, yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, that's the thing, like it's a big world and it's a big network and we might be scared of it, but it's not that scary as actually. It's just, there's just a lot of factors in it and it's a lot of technical as well. So if you're not that technical, it might be too overwhelming for you. But again, like there's so many help and support to get and there's so many people actually working with Google Ads. So it's not something that we should be scared of. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great way to dive into the Q&A. Don't be scared. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's have a look at the questions. The the good thing about being the moderator is I get to ask the first couple of questions, which is uh, which is always a privilege. Uh, so let's get started. Um, Funda, you you may know that we had a, a we've had a couple of seminars. We've had one on content creation. We've had on one on SEO, and now we're looking at Google Ads. Uh, and you already mentioned that this is in, in your tips, but could you elaborate a little bit on how SEO and ads could work together um, up in your in your perspective? It's actually quite simple. Um, what I do with my colleague is that we are just sitting together, we are writing ads together, 
uh, and then we're using like those apps in the same content way, in the same keyword way, and then we're just implementing them in each different type of platforms. So what he like, I don't know the technical part of what he does exactly, but I know which kind of apps that he's using, and I'm just transferring it into my apps. So it's really simple, but it's more if you like, I'm not CEO SEO guy. So I don't really know how much that works and how it is, how it is working because I know there's some limits and characters something out there. But like what we usually do is that we're just working really close together and then we're just like giving each other tips about which keyword, which word we should be using and so on. And then we're just implementing that on each platform actually. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because SEO is all about being found on the right words and you organize your website and your content to to be found and essentially that's also what you're trying to do with your ads so yeah. ads and keyword optimization and seo can learn a lot from each other i guess is, is the Definitely. point there. And it's okay. just and it's just the same thing is that um like when you for example have different kind of instagram facebook pages and linkedin you don't type in different types of commercials or newsletters or so on you always keep it in the same Fine, like in the same perspective. So why not just just do the same on your marketing part? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I have uh, one more, and then I'll I'll open up with the rest of the guys here. Uh, yeah. You mentioned video ads, and I think that's really an interesting one because <clears throat> when I go to YouTube and I want to watch the videos, I, they're kind of always in the way these ads, right? Yeah. So they're kind of the the new pop up. Uh, and you mentioned that within those five first seconds where, where you have to watch the app is really where you should be putting your message. But what is kind of the maximum length of a video ad? Maybe not technically, but but from a from a best practice perspective. The maximum length of a video ad is six minutes. So Wait. that is the thing. Like when I say that you only pay for the first. 30 like you will only pay when people have watched your video ad after 30 seconds it's really important to put in your messages in the front of the video because or in the first because that is the most important thing that people are seeing before they skip it and there is different kind of uh, video ads as well like the ones that skippable the ones that not skippable the ones that we don't like that much when we don't want to see something but they're out there and like why not take advantage of that and use that to our own advance so Absolutely, yeah. We want to consume video instead of text, I guess, is, is the fact for a lot of us. All right, so uh, here's a more of an observation, actually, or a slight correction. It's Casper saying CPM is cost per mil and not million. Yeah. So that means cost per thousand. I'm sure you know that, Funda. You're kicking yourself right now, but I just wanted to make sure that. Casper, I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah, remember everything I know, but yeah, sorry. Yeah. So that's, thanks for keeping us uh, straight there uh, and honest, Casper. Uh, cost per mil is cost per thousand. Yeah, yeah a little bit of Latin in there. Yeah. Um, here is a, a question from Luis. What were your favorite tools again? You, you mentioned analytics and ads, obviously. Uh, could you rerun? And if you have any other tools that you use regularly, maybe throw them in. We'll include mm -hmm. them in the show notes after the webinar as well. Yeah. Well, uh, my favorite tool again is Luis. That is something called Google AdWords Editor. That is where you do, uh, where you can see your campaign. It's not that much fancy looking as the ads is. It's more technical, but I usually, what I do is that I'm typing every changes that I'm doing in a normal Google sheet or an Excel sheet. And then I can take everything there and put it in the Google ads editor. So like that is basically what I've been doing the past two years. <laughs> Working with Excel, it, I, love, I love it. So. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it's wor it's working. Like it's it's a nice tool. And then what you can do with the Google Ads editor is that you can post things, or you can maybe see find some duplicates as well within your keywords. You can actually see a lot of different things. So download it and see if there's anything that's interesting there that you find, or ask me if you have some questions within that. So do you actually copy paste from Excel into into the editor, or do you upload your file, or? No. Yeah, you can also upload them as a file. But what I usually do is I just copy paste it in from Excel. Nice. Um, what I do is I always keep the campaign names, the ad groups. If I have a keywords, the keywords, the match type, or the click per cost. And then I take if I have 30 new keywords instead of putting them in or correcting them each one of them, 
I'm just copy pasting everything and into Google Ads editor. And then I just post it. But that is really important, like the post button. If you do a major change and you're not quite sure if you should post it, then do it in bits. Um, so you don't post everything and change the whole account in once. So know. another good tip, like don't post everything at once, unless you're sure that is it is something that has to be posted. Yeah, so, that's yeah. that's a good tip, and and also I guess that's also has to do with when you do uh, like testing or conversion rate optimization. If you change too many things, you don't know what worked, right? So if you want to learn from your changes and and your performance increases, if you change yeah. everything, you you have no clue what worked and what didn't. Exactly, and in uh, like what we are saying, like that the changes will be seen or you'll get the full data of the changes actually 30 days later. So like be patient with it, but also like take in consideration what you have been changing. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. All right, on to the next question, uh, or actually also maybe an observation. This is from Sara. She asks. Uh, there are a lot of abbreviations, like would it be possible to get an explanation for the most important ones, at least maybe? And I think we can't probably go into all of the three-letter <laughs> acronyms now, but an idea just popped up that we may want to elaborate on and maybe do a cheat sheet with the most popular abbreviations and, and, and send that yeah. out to the to the webinar group here. So that maybe that's something you and I can... Uh, can take <laughs> we actually, uh, here on our online advisor, we actually have a dictionary for those uh -huh. but it's in Danish so um I can put it in and then translate them as well but yeah like we I know that I'm talking a lot of ads ads word and in Google words and I have a lot of those but uh, yeah we uh, will try to figure out something right Klaus? cool absolutely we will it's a it's a it's a good uh observation from Sara then also when you're so used to something you kind of get home blind and you don't really realize that you're talking about TLAs all the time, and TLAs is three-letter acronyms, and nobody understands where you yeah. are. So thanks that for keeping true. us uh, sane there, Sarah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> OK, here's, uh, here's another question, actually, from, from me I wanted to throw in there. Um, if you're getting started uh, with Google Ads or really want to dive in here and, 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 and get going, what do you think is the most important thing? What would you advise people to do first when they start off, I apart would from do. get a massive budget? Yeah, well, what I usually do when I sit with a client is that I'm asking, what are your expectations? Of course, mm -hmm. I'm telling them a little bit how Google Ads work, but I also need to know when you have to start a new campaign or a new account, you have to know what the expectations are. Like, do you want to create more leads? Do you want to have conversions? Do you want more people to see your website? Or do you want your brand to get more awareness stuff? So, like, those goals, you have to know what your goals is before you can work on it and that is one thing that I actually that is that I'm finding really interesting with Google is that you put in your goals first and then it's kind of narrowing it down your options within it so like ask yourself first when you want to start with Google Ads what is your goal of this campaign like everything has to have a purpose you cannot just drive with the flow just to see how it goes but put in a goal and say hey I want to see how many clicks I get on my website or how many leads I actually get and then start with that. So the I would definitely say like ask yourself first what is most important important ah, what is yeah. mo most important and then yeah work from there. I love that advice because that that kind of dovetails back to pretty much everything you do in your marketing. What is the goal? I mean, should we get on TikTok? Should we do Instagram stories? Yeah. Should we? I mean, depends on what your goal is, right? Every tool is not right for every job. So really consider. What is the goal that I'm trying to achieve and why is this medium or channel or ad type better at achieving that goal than the alternatives? So yeah, yeah solid and advice. We are, we're always like, whenever we sit in the marketing team and sit like just asking each other like, hey, should we do this? Yeah, but why are we doing it? Like we all, we have this big purpose there out anyway. Like we know we want to create more leads. We know that if you want to create more clicks, well, why should we not just put that into our platforms as well and say, hey, we want to do this. Let's start with that. Yeah. So. All right. So we're continuing with the with the questions here. <clears throat> These are the ones that came in after the Q and A session started, so we haven't uh, put those into slide slides. Uh, there's a question from from Casper asking, would you look at devices and time of day based on expressions or sessions on a website? This is maybe a, a bit technical there, but mm, I they those will be more like a session. Um, I'm not 100% sure, 
uh, I don't really remember it right now, but I would say it's sessions because when someone is like those uh, reports are actually putting like generating the reports by seeing where the traffic comes from. So it won't be just by something that's been seen, but also someone who's actually inter like engaged with that. So I would say sessions. Okay, solid. Um, here's a question from Morden. Can you show your contact info again? Uh, sure, Morden, you'll get all of that in the follow-up emails. You'll get the, the information to, to find uh, there. Um, here's a question from uh, Nandithia. Sorry if I mispronounced that. If you had to pilot Google Ads for a specific target audience in a specific market, how long would you run the pilot to see the results? 30 so, days. 30 days, all right. 30 days, yeah. Um, what I've always been told back in when I was working in Cognizant and Accenture and also here around people is that it takes around 30 days to generate the traffic, to generate the data. So 30 days, more or less, and then you'll see how the campaign are working. And that's also what I used to say to my clients, like, yes, I'm like putting in this campaign now, but I cannot tell you tomorrow what's happening. I'll have at least 30 days to see where the, what the tra traffic is and how the data looks like. So, yeah. So a bit of, a, of, um, uh, of time there is needed. And I guess it also, you know, back to the numbers game, uh, uh, and, and statistics it depends on how much traffic and how, mu how much money you pour into it because you need a certain number of, of of people seeing your ads and reacting to your ads before you can say anything with any statistical significance. Definitely, and it also really depends on what your company like is giving out on services and products. Is it more a seasonal product? If it's not, like those things are also something that you should should take in consideration like are you in the high peak of your business right now or is it in six months that like hence you can't really use mm. that the data that you're generating today if they're only going to be relevant in six months for the clients so it's a gray area um where i would say 30 days but also like ask yourself the question like is my product in time like is it a say, seasonal product or not so yeah all right, here's a question from Henne. Um, this is regarding display ads, and she asks, is it possible to target a specific media for the ads, like a specific online newspaper? Can you decide on which sites your display ads will be shown? Um, not what I know of, because uh, display ads are actually using the many, many, many uh, of Google's network, just like networks, basically. So you can't really limit it that. But um, what you can do is that you can add some keywords into display ads as well. Um, that's something that I became familiar, familiar with lately. To be honest, that's a little bit shameful of me. But you can add keywords there to restrict your display ads to be shown for everyone that is not even relevant for you. Put some negative keywords there as well. Like put some keywords that is relevant for you as well and make sure the audience is as you want it to be. So that that is the that is the factors you can really use, but I don't think you can just say that you only want to have one channel, because that's when you pay for those channels to make your ads show, and that is the one that's cost way more. So such a good advice, and I'm really glad that you, that you brought it up. So thank you for asking that question, Hannah, and, and making us talk about this. We way back when we launched some of our mobile. Uh, marketing capabilities like mobile ads and SMS and mobile landing pages and so on. Uh, mobile was obviously a huge keyword for us, but so much obviously is around mobile. So we were advertising our mobile apps templates and whatnot uh, for people searching for ringtones and mobile covers and he headsets and whatnot. And we were just pouring money into these campaigns, not knowing that the, the negative keywords or the words that you do not want to be found on are can be as important as your as your real keywords. So yeah, really important to keep in mind. What do I not want to be found on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we won't do in ringtones and mobile covers for sure. No, um, I find it really interesting though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here is a question from Johnny. What are your experience with use of keyword? Do you often see duplicating keywords that is bidding against each other? Yes. That's too technical for me to even get into, but you get the question. <laughs> I got the question. 
Uh, yes, like when I see an account and there is, as I said, like lowercase and uppercase, upper lowercase keywords, those are bidding against each other. But if you also have, like, um, if you, for example, have a keyword saying that you, uh, I can't come up on something, women's shoes, for example, and you have another as have another keyword as well, but just with another type of uh, upper and lowercase, those keywords are bidding against each other. But I also see people that has not does not have a structure in their campaigns, and then they just add another keyword that already is in the account. They're exactly the same, and those things are actually bidding against each other, and that is something that we should be aware of. That's why the structure is really important because if you have that, you have a you can have an overview about what you already have in your account and what you don't have in your account so even though that a keyword comes up in analytics for example the next month that is just so good and you already have it well why should you be implementing it again so like we have to be cautious about which keywords we're using but also in which kind of match type we're using them in and how much we're bidding on them and those are the ones that you can change in manual cpc uh, manual cpc the bid strategy types cost per clicks and uh, health automated ones to enhance the click per cost. Uh -huh. So you may actually be able to drive up your own costs by bidding against yourself. Yeah. And that's so I, I can see why people know Google Ads, but don't always feel so confident about Google Ads. But that is that is often when like that's when you actually see that your campaign is not running because it's uh, running out of budget. So that mm. is the thing like you have to when you're using the not automated bid strategy types you have to keep in mind that, hey, what am I actually doing with those keywords? Are they relevant? Are they not? And so on. It's a more hardcore part of the ad strategy types, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's doable. It's not, nothing okay. is impossible, so. All right, <laughs> nothing's impossible. Here's a question, actually, this is, a, this is a general question that a lot of people are asking, and I can't, uh, and I actually wonder why it hasn't come up earlier. Uh, so I'll try to do kind of a, a, an umbrella question that, that sums these up. Uh, what is your generic recommendation for a startup budget? A startup budget. Well, do you want it in Danish or? <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised if you can even give a number because it's it all depends on what you want, right? But uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Like it's not something that is fixed. Um, you can always adjust your budget. But you also have to think about that if you have a low budget, your ads might not be seen that often and they might run out of budget. So like take not the highest budget you have and not the lowest, or maybe just start from the lowest and see how much you get out of that. Like if you will say that you have, you only wanna spend uh, 50 euros, that's maybe high factor but 10 euros per day on a campaign, like see how that goes and then like adjust it because it's not something that is fixed. You can always change it and you can always adjust it to your like company. So take what you feel is good and then adjust it toward that. So yeah, it's, so it's such a difficult one to, uh, it's such a difficult one to answer. You know, for some people, a uh, hundred euros a month is a lot, a day is a lot. And for some it's like, it's not getting exactly. them anywhere. So it's really a tough question. But I guess the takeaway here is don't boil the ocean day one, start small and, and, and be yeah. confident in what is what is going on. And then you can increase yeah. your budget to see what's going exactly. on. Exactly. Uh, so there are a lot of questions around that. How much should you spend? How much does an average company spend and all that? But I think the, the, we're gonna answer it this way that it really depends. And it also depends on what your goal is. So maybe that's a, more of a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, here is a question from uh, Leticia. Uh, and I think she's, she's definitely taking some stuff uh, home today because she's asking, would you suggest to create a new account if the account, the account you have now is very messy and not well structured? No, I would actually take the fight um, and I would rearrange everything because the, that account already have um data within it so by renaming them and putting the ads in different ways and actually just clear clean it up will be the most efficient way of keeping your your data but also cleaning up your ads account so i would not i would not start all over again i would definitely take the war and say okay sitting down day one i'm doing campaigns today and just like clean it up in that way 
and see which one of the campaigns that's actually relevant because some campaigns might have different kind of audiences some campaigns might have some keywords that's not necessary like clean up on what you already have and don't make it more messier than it's already is <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah but I can definitely see where where you're coming from, Leticia. Like, like uh, let's just start from scratch. But 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 yeah. what Flinders really telling us yeah. here is is you'll actually throw away some useful information, some useful data that you've paid for, both in your time and and suddenly in your ad spend. So yeah. take the time to really make get the return on that investment by by uh, by by organizing and cleaning up. Exactly, and I also know that some people are having a lot of accounts in their hands already. Um, and that might be why they're asking, would you start all over again? Because there is so many accounts to already that has to be optimized and so on. But like, if you're close with that client, tell them, hey, I need this time to clean up this account. Or if it's your own account, take out your time. Like, it will be more beneficial for you. Great. And I know there are some great tips and advice also on how to organize a Google account. Should it be per product or per country? Or per, There are many different ways to do that depending on what your goals is. So I don't know if you can even just come up with some general best practices, but th there are some pretty key ways to, to do that, right? There is. Like uh, usually before, uh, I would just think that the best way is just to take whatever you have on your website and put those headlines and tabs into the ad groups. But one thing that I came across lately is that that might not be beneficial for a specific account as well. Like you, what I've been doing is I'm taking the products or the services and putting that into a structure and saying, okay, these product types are almost the same. They should be together or like organizing in that way. But again, like there's so many different ways to organize it. But as long as you know your structure and you know that a campaign search campaign is for Denmark, for example, make sure that you label that that way. So you don't know that you're not putting Swedish keywords into a Danish account and th so on. Like it's really important to just keep labeling it or at least have a structure on how you're labeling it. So you know what to do when you do the whole like Pope bunk editing thing that I usually do on ads editor. So yeah, like if you really have part time on not knowing how it works or if you have a question, like just look it up and see what makes more sense for you. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So products and services is a good uh, organization strategy. Trying to think again, also I, I would be my sense, think outside in, what would the people be searching for? Uh, maybe it's not, it's not our company, it's not about us, it's not you know how long we've been in business, it's about the different problems and solutions that they're uh, looking for out yeah. there. And, and, and that typically yeah. is, is your products and services and, and organize, it, organize it that way. Definitely. All right, and so. Um, general like it's more like best practices more like what you find more useful i would say all right we are we are closing in rapidly rapidly on the hour there are still a couple of questions left that we may <laughs> not uh get to to answer but do do keep the questions coming in the next couple of minutes we will stay on and if there are questions that we're missing out on today in the q a session we will follow up on email so don't be don't be shy uh shoot your your questions to us still uh, but I just want to make sure to mention, uh, I'm just going to go through here, that we have some more stuff coming up. So if you fancy more webinars, um, go to emailtier.com slash webinars. We have our on-demand stuff on SEO, on uh, content, uh, I can't speak. Content creation, content marketing. Uh, we have a lot about lead management, events management, and so on. So check that out. And also the upcoming webinars. Uh, we're doing one on Excel for marketeers. I know you and I are both great uh, fans <laughs> of, of using Excel. Um, I'm going to that one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this, this will be me talking about my my best tips and tricks for how to organize your data, how to clean up dirty data, how to um, Basically what I'm seeing in Excel is people do a lot of the same tasks over and over and over and over again. And sometimes Excel can just be an incredible time saver. So if you're doing redundant stuff, thinking, you know, there's a little voice in the back of your head saying, this could be done in a smarter way. Maybe it could. So join that webinar and, and we'll see if I can come up with some smarter ways there. And there's also one coming up on uh, eMarketeer automations where we'll deep dive into all of the different automation types you will find in eMarketeer. Um, if today has made you curious about the eMarketer platform, do visit eMarketer.com and sign up for a free trial and you can test if that is something that would be relevant for you guys. And 
our contact details will be in the follow-up as well Funda's contact details obviously so if you need advice on Google Ads or anything uh, within the service scope of, of what online advice is doing you'll find her details there as well uh, so keep the questions coming if you have them but we are absolutely we're at the hour completely well done on timing and thank you so much for all of the questions that have uh, yeah. that have uh, come through today how are you feeling Funda from your first webinar I'm feeling excited. Uh, sorry for maybe rushing through some of it though to the people, but um, yeah, it was my first webinar and I'm happy that I got to do it. It's a brilliant time to like put it out there and then just share my knowledge because I know that I sometimes just talk a lot of Google Ads stuff here in the office as well. And sometimes you're like, when I keep it down, like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but, no, you you did great. It certainly was not uh, obvious that this was your first webinar, and you know we had a lot of time to go through Q and A's, which is something that people often ask for in our webinars. They would actually have more time in the Q and A part, and and I think we we kind of hit the mark on that one today. So hopefully the balance was was good. But they will let us know in the evaluations, I am sure. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna round it off. Thank you so much once again, Funda, for being here. Uh, maybe this will not be our last webinar together. That would be uh, a lot of fun to do more stuff with uh, with you guys from Online Advisor. And um, we will send all of you the slides, the recordings, and a brief evaluation, and uh, obviously invite you to the upcoming webinars we have. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Funda. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.